Hello, Classic Rock fans. I'm reporting about a week and a half after seeing Diana Ross uh, play a concert here in Milwaukee. She played the Miller High Life Theater. That was only the second concert I've seen in that venue. Uh, a couple of years ago, I saw uh, George Clinton and P-Funk there, uh, and that was a fun night. So, uh, Diana Ross played just uh, a week and a half ago, and she was fantastic. I love... 60s era Motown. I love the Supremes. And she amazingly still sounds like she did on those 60s records. And she opened the show with a bunch of Supreme songs all at once. And that was just terrific for me because it was like all of my favorite music from her right off the bat. And that was just the stuff I was thinking about. She has other tracks in her discography that I also really like, but you know, most concerts you go to, they save all of their best original classic stuff for the very end. Not Diana Ross. She put that stuff right out front, and uh, I appreciated that. So that, yeah, uh, started the show off on a really great note, and I just enjoyed the show uh, for the rest of the night. At one point in the night, she acknowledged her age and said she was 79, and my jaw absolutely dropped because, you know, of course I know she's you know, been recording since the 60s, um, but I have seen artists who are that age before, and nobody looks as good or moves as well as her, with the exception of maybe Mick Jagger. Like, as far as artists who I've seen at that age, I'm thinking I've seen Buddy Guy, I've seen Patti LaBelle, I've seen Bob Dylan, I've seen, you know, Mike Love from the Beach Boys and Paul McCartney, all of those people are, I saw them right around at that age, and, you know, they were all fine, they all played really well, but nobody was doing the costume changes uh, like Diana Ross was, and nobody was moving around on stage as much as she was. Uh, so that is a huge credit to her. She is still performing at a very high level, and that makes for a really enjoyable show. It was more than just the music. You know, she had her costume changes, and these were very elegant and uh, over-the-top dresses uh, that the crowd really reacted to. And she talked to the audience between songs, which was very nice. And it was also a fantastic crowd. It was one of the most diverse crowds I've ever been a part of. Most shows I go to, I'll just admit, you know, they're classic rock shows, so it's it's primarily, like, white people. But this show was... It felt like true diversity, like equal parts white, equal parts black, equal parts um, gay, equal parts old, equal parts young. It, it felt like a real melting pot of an audience, and I just don't experience that often when I go to shows. Uh, so that was one of the most positive aspects of a crowd I've ever seen, because it, it really did feel like a bunch of people with different backgrounds were all coming together to enjoy this same music. And I firmly believe that music is one of the greatest things on earth that can bring people together. And this was a great example of that. So just a huge credit to Diana Ross and the fan base she's built over the years. Again, just a lot of positivity in that building. As far as her discography goes, I know her stuff with the Supremes. I didn't know a lot of the other songs through the night, but I was enjoying them, even though I wasn't terribly familiar. I had forgotten what a big hit Upside Down was. That was a song that I heard a lot in my childhood, and uh, hearing it live in concert, I was just like, oh, that's right, she does this one too, and that was a big hit, and, and the crowd really got into it. Uh, of course, the other one uh, that she does is uh, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. I loved hearing that live. That's an absolutely beautiful song. And of course, um, you know, her, her final part of the set, she did uh, her version of I Will Survive, which of course, you know, was a great note to sort of start the close of the show to. Uh, the last song of the night she played was a newer song, which I think was off her latest album, which was called Thank You. And she talked a little bit about her most recent uh, record, and the theme of that record is gratitude. Like, she said that she's just you know, here at the end of her career, she feels very appreciative for the uh, amazing life and career she's had. And I love that. I think any artist who really puts an emphasis on gratitude, uh, that 
communicates to me that they get it, that they understand uh, what it means to have the life and career that they did. And as long as they can appreciate that themselves and acknowledge that, that to me brings them down to earth. That to me makes them uh, human and relatable. And I, I really appreciate when they make the extra effort to express that. So yeah, I definitely want to listen to the new album. I want to explore more of Diana Ross's catalog because uh, I, I, because she didn't just, because I enjoyed most of the songs in the set list, you know, and, and she released a lot of really big records even after those years with the Supremes. So yeah, if she comes to your town, I would absolutely recommend going to see her. I would say it's almost a must see if you haven't seen her before, because, uh, even if you aren't terribly familiar with a lot of her music, it's going to be a very positive and fun environment. She is absolutely going to play those golden 60s classics that you probably do know, plus, you know, her more uh, uh, recognizable solo hits like the ones I mentioned. So you'll know some songs, but the tracks that she plays in between the songs that you recognize, uh, the nice thing is, is that they are all really enjoyable. And she's got a pretty decent-sized band behind her, so um, they're engaged. The background singers were had their moments where they, you know, sang their own solos while she was off uh, doing a, a costume change, and that kind of kept the show moving. Like there weren't, there wasn't any lulls, and it, it was a very tight show. Like once the music started, it really didn't stop until she got to the end. So there were no breaks, and it feels like a continuous sub. Uh, party. So yeah, highly recommended. A must-see, I think, if you're a fan of American music history, because uh, she's very important, very influential, and you know, even though she's playing great and looks great, uh, like she said, she's 79, she's not going to be here forever, she's not going to be on the road forever, and you can't take artists like her for granted. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen her, make a point to go. And if you haven't seen her before, then you don't need to hear it from me. You know what a great show this is. So yeah, Diana Ross, big thumbs up from me. That was a really enjoyable show. So I don't know if I'll get a chance to see her again, but I will absolutely be going to the show if she comes back to town. But with that, thank you for watching this concert review. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out the other concert reviews I've done here. I'm almost certain I've covered a different artist you're a fan of, especially if you're a fan of classic rock. If you like classic rock, I would also invite you to check out the podcast I do. It's about classic rock. We've had a lot of great guests on this year and a lot more very cool stuff coming up. So please uh, check out our social media links in the description below uh, and check out the podcast I do. But with that, see Diana Ross if she comes to your town and keep rocking.